the choir would like to say, share with you a beautiful, beautiful song. <clears throat> no greater love has no one. <clears throat>
of the policeman that was shot in Richmond. And the man who committed that crime was arrested in our own Eastville, doing his duty, defending his community. And there are many who have done it to continue to do so. No greater love than that. I'm reading this morning a familiar passage of scripture to which I shall come later on in the message, but it's the, it's the familiar verses from 2 Chronicles 7, beginning with verse 12. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I've heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, verses 14 and 15, provide the background. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Then I will hear, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. And my eyes will be open and my ears attentive. The prayer made in this place. This is Memorial Day weekend. A time when we remember. A time when we remember the sacrifices made across the years by those who have worn the uniform of our land and those who continue to wear the uniform of our land. Tomorrow, of course, is the official Memorial Day. And for many people, Memorial Day weekend is that, a time for picnics and ball games and outings and everything else under the sun but often overlooked by the fact that this is a time when we remember what God has done for us as a country and the blessings that we have enjoyed and experienced at his hand. And as we pause this morning then, we need to realize that there are still those who represent us in faraway places. And there are soldiers and policemen and others who serve in these capacities that still put their lives on the line every day to defend us and to keep us safe from harm. And so I believe that the need of the hour, the need of the hour is for us to realize what God has done for us as a nation and as a people and to heed what he has to say to us the sadness of this occasion is that there are those who serve us in high and holy places today who are critical of some of the things that are being done by some of the decisions being made. And so it is time that we remember, try to remember what God has said to us in his word along this particular line. And so I come to you this morning with what I consider a word from God, and I didn't make it up, I'm just reading from the book, a word from God for this Memorial Day weekend that applies to us all of the time. And I'll put it in three simple words, or three simple statements, which I will give to you one by one and then we'll look at each of them as we move along. The first is in form of a quotation from the scriptures taken from the 51st chapter of Isaiah where God reminds us through his servant that we need to remember the rock from which we were hewn. This is a direct quote from Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 1. And Isaiah was simply telling the people, as God has related to him, that the people needed to remember what God had done for them. He needed to remember, as he puts it, 
the rock from which they were hewn, the hole of the pit from which they were digged. And so on this Memorial Day weekend, I think it's a special word to us as a country. We need to remember, my friend, the blessings of God upon this nation across the years. Blessings that exist to this very day and to this very hour that God has been good to America. The sadness of all of this is that in the midst of all of this that we seem to forget the rock from which we were hewn. And so his challenge to the people of his day and the challenge to us today is to remember the blessings of God from the past, to remember our history and our heritage. Some people have the idea that the pilgrims came here because they were looking for a larger Walmart or something over there and had to come over here to look for, and that's not where they, why they came. They came to this country because they were looking for a place where they might worship God in peace and walk with him in the way that they wanted to walk with him. The poet has described for us what really happened for us as a nation. And it speaks to our need and it speaks to our situation this morning. The words were written by Brooke Scanlon, the poet, and this is the way it's put it. he put it. God built him a continent of glory and filled it with treasures untold. He studied it with sweet flowing fountains and traced it with long winding streams. He carpeted it with soft rolling prairies and columned it with thundering mountains. He graced it with deep and shadowed forests and filled them with a song. Then he called unto himself a thousand peoples and summoned the bravest among them. They came from the ends of the earth, each bearing a gift and a hope. The glow of adventure was in their eyes and in their hearts the glory of hope. And out of the bounty of the earth and the labor of men, out of the longing of the heart and the prayer of souls, out of the memory of ages and the hopes of the world, God fashioned a nation and loved and blessed it with purpose sublime, and they called it America. And there is our heritage, and that is the rock from which we were hewn. Our heritage as a nation is one of which we need to be grateful and proud. Those men, and they were nearly all men, perhaps all men in those early days, had a deep reliance upon God and a deep love for God. And as we look at this this morning, we need to realize along with Isaiah and the people of God a long, long time ago that we need to remember the pit from which we were hewn. There are those who would have us to forget that this morning. There are those who would like for us to remember, to forget the fact that this nation was founded by God-fearing men who were not ashamed to fall on their knees and perhaps on their faces and to pray that God would bless this country in which they were seeking to put together. And so in the midst of all of this, there have been those who wanted to change history, to say that these things didn't really happen, that they no longer are relevant to our day and to our time. And through the ringing corridors of heaven, the word of God sounds forth, remember the rock from which you were hewn. Remember the blessings of God upon this nation of ours across the year and even to this day that some are prone to forget. And so God's word to us this morning on this Memorial Day weekend is taken directly from scripture but relevant and applicable to us. Remember the rock from which you were hewn. There is a second word from the Lord this morning. And that is, not only do we need to remember the rock from which we were hewn, but listen to this one. We need to redig the clogged up wells of the past. This too is a reference from Scripture. 
You remember that God called Abraham from Ur of the Chaldees to leave his country and go to a place. He didn't even know where he was going. And God said, just go. I'll tell you when you get there. And he went to what we know today as the promised land or Israel. And there he lived and raised his flocks and prospered and all of this. And because of the shortage of water in that part of the country, they dug wells to feed their flocks and to feed their people and to water the people. But with, as is always the case, there were those who didn't want to see that happen. And the enemies would come and try to drive Abraham and his people from the land. And one way they tried to do so was by filling up the wells of water so that they couldn't get water for their flocks or for their families. In due time, you recall, Abraham died and his son Isaac replaced him in the role of leadership. And that's when God spoke to Isaac and said to him, Isaac, dig again the wells of water which they dug in the days of your father Abraham. In other Isaac, go and unclog those clogged up wells because there is the answer to your needs in this day and in this time. We live in a land where a lot of the wells have been clogged. Some of us can remember the older days when a man's word was his honor and when people trusted one another, when patriotism was not looked down upon as it is in our day, when the American flag was not burned on the streets of America, when people did not protest that which was not in keeping with their way of thinking. There we had, we had religious freedom. I preached in a church in Alexandria where the pastor of that church way back in years gone by was put in jail for preaching the word of God in this country, but he preached on just the same. We came along in a day when the wells of honesty and integrity and self-respect and many other wells had, had, been, had been opened, but through the passing of the days, the wells have been clogged up. And today we are having children taught in schools that God doesn't exist and the Bible has no relevancy whatsoever and that marriage or anything else can go on and on and on. And so the wells of honesty and all of these have been filled. And God's word to America this morning in my mind is very clear. America, you need to unclog those wells and once again become the nation that I can bless with my presence and with my love and my care. We need to remember the rock from which we were hewn. We need to remember to unclog the wells that have been clogged up. And then in the third place, and perhaps as important as any other, we need to return to the God from whom we have strayed. Like the prodigal son in that passage in the Bible who became disenchanted with family life and with farm life and decided that he wanted his part of the inheritance now, demanded it from his father and reluctantly his father gave it to him. And the Bible says he took his journey into a far country. And there he wasted his substance with riotous living. If you don't believe that's going on today, you haven't seen the last news report or read the last newspaper to find out what he was talking about. For America this morning has strayed into the far country as well. But that story in Luke 15 has a beautiful ending to it because the Bible says that there in that pig pen he came to himself and he said, I need to go home. Need to go home to my father. I don't deserve to be a son any longer. And so I'll just ask to be taken back as one of the hired hands. 
and I'll just live as a hired hand in the bunkhouse or wherever hired hands lived. And he went back, you recall. But his father didn't put him in the bunkhouse and didn't receive him back as a hired hand. Threw his arms around him, put the family ring on his finger, had the fatted calf killed to receive his son back home because the wayward son had come home. I stand here this morning to remind you that America has gone into the far country. If you don't believe that, then you haven't seen the most recent statistics on the killing of unborn babies in this country. You haven't seen the cesspools of filth as coming across the TV or movie screen or whatever the other means of communication. You haven't seen the recent statistics on crime here in this country. Let me tell you what I heard on the radio just this past week. There are places in our country today where drug addiction has become such a disastrous thing on the human element that their funeral home, listen to this, their funeral homes in America where the funeral homes have to rent refrigerated trucks to keep the bodies outside the funeral home until they can get to them to bury the bodies. All because of the abuse of drugs that's going on in our country today. The addictions are killing many. The, in addition to these, the failure of marriages and families. We stand here this morning, we sit here this morning, we worship here this morning. When statistically speaking, one out of every two marriages in America ends in failure. If you were a doctor and 50% of your patients died, you would not be very happy. And I'm a preacher and when 50% of the marriages don't turn out, then that's not anything to be happy about either. And so the riotous living of millions in our country has become a disaster. I mentioned the fact of the policemen in Richmond, Virginia. And your policemen were in Richmond? A policeman in Richmond, Virginia, killed because he went to a car to inquire about something. And it's happening every day in our country. And, in the, in, in the, and I could add other things to the list, and you know of other things in the list that have become a part of our nation today. And I'm here to stand before you as your pastor to say to you, America, like the prodigal son, needs to come back to, a, to God and be the people of God that he would have us to be. And so on this Memorial Day weekend, I believe that God does have a word for America. And I believe that that word is very simple and one that can be understood by every single person in this room this morning. We must remember the rock from which we were hewn. We must remember the history that brought us to where we are this morning, to the faith of those men and women in the past who gave their lives for our country. We need to remember the rock from which we were hewn. In the second place, we need to reopen the old clogged up wells. There are a lot of things that went on in the generation of some of us in this room this morning that we would do well to recover, that the younger generation is never going to see or never going to experience unless something is done about it. And then in the third place, for this to happen, we must return to the God from whom we have strayed and against he uh, and against him turn. These things we must do. Remember the rock, reopen the wells, return to God. God gave us the answer to it. I read it to you to begin the message this morning. I want us, I'd like for us to read it together so that the words might really sink in and we'll walk out of here this morning having remembered and been reminded of what needs to be done in our country. Share it with me, please. If my people, 
which are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. I leave you with one final word, a Memorial Day challenge. You would word it in different ways, I guess, but this is what came to my mind. We need to become the America that God can once again bless, as we sang it a while ago. And the people said, Amen. Father, we thank you for this time together. On this Memorial Day weekend, your people have gathered for worship, and they have gathered in other churches up and down our land, throughout our community here in the Northern Neck, and even beyond. Help us to remember what it's all about. It's about more than cooking a hamburger on a grill, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's more about having a family get together, and there's nothing wrong with that. But above all, we need to remember the rock from which we were hewn, the pit, the well that needs to be unclogged, and the return to our Father who has blessed us to this end. This is our prayer for our country, for our community. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The closing hymn is not usually sung as a closing hymn or an invitational hymn, but it's appropriate, I believe, this morning. For you see, the need of the hour is for God's people to do what? Stand up for Jesus. And if you agree with that, then you stand with me and let's sing it with wholeness of heart this morning as we conclude our Memorial Day service.
Now we'll be leaving and walk out. We'll go to lunch, I guess, somewhere. And then we'll be about other things this weekend. But let us not forget what Memorial Day is all about. In the name of Jesus, I make this prayer. And all the people agree with it and said, Amen. Amen.